Okay, welcome. We are beginning now. Will the game come up? Hang on. Wait. Let me do this, change it around. Oh, not this again. This is annoying. This is really, really annoying. Come on, just show up. <clears throat> Game only. No. Oh, I hate it when it does that. Alright, one second, one second, just rebooting the game. It does this every flipping time. I'll have the game open, and I even, I even tested it before I went live. Like, far out. And it showed up, it's fine. But then, I, I, I start up again, and suddenly it's still looking for the game to capture. Like, what the heck's up with that? Far out. That is annoying. Alright, alright, alright. There we go, there we go. Now it's working, now it's working. Cool, cool. My audio's working. All that's happening. Who's here? Who's here? Come on, people. Let's let's hit up that chat. Actually, yes, that reminds me. I need to pull up the phone. <clears throat> so that I can actually see messages. In the live chat. Andrew, hey, I, hey, I finally get to see one of these live. I missed the last ones. Very excited. Hell yeah, bro. Glad you're here. Really glad you're here. I'm not going to lie. I was kind of, I was kind of nervous that people weren't coming up because like my live streams, right? We're talking like five people immediately come up at once. Um, concurrent viewers that is. Um, and then it eventually goes up as high as like nine or even 10. But, uh, yeah, there's only like, what is it? Two viewers right now so far? Yeah, whatever. <clears throat> Stuff happens. And I do also think, um, because there are a couple other streams going on right now, like literally the exact same time. Like I don't, like I, I do know I have some, uh, ortho bro viewers, orthodox. Um, and one of the really good guys who I recently, well, last week I hosted a debate, um, on his channel, um, orthodox Christian theology, Craig Trulia, and he's streaming at the exact same time right now. So I presume my orthodox viewers may or may not. Uh, be available, but hey, who knows? Maybe they, maybe, maybe some might prefer to watch the uh, the Protestant is <laughs> in playing Minecraft and building a, a Celtic style church. <laughs> but uh, anyway, glad you're here, and I'm glad there are two other people here right now. Perfect, awesome. I reckon <clears throat> no time for dilly dallying. Let us begin. Let us return to the wicked land of Sodom, Babel, Egypt, and begin building its first church. Oh, not begin, continue building its first church. Ah. <sighs> <clears throat> all right and we are back where we just left off so uh last time we just ended with building this little placeholder celtic cross uh this very spot in the middle of what will soon be a very nice church um this is only a placeholder i only made it because oh look it looks nice and uh to be fair it actually was a good uh test design i believe uh, in order to, um, yeah, in order to build the real thing. I'm not sure where I'll put the, the cross finally, um, but probably outside somewhere, maybe on this same hill where the church is in the same little island. Um, but I believe today the priority is to get the frame, at least get the frame of this building done. And it, sh it shouldn't be hard because it's only cobblestone, so I don't have to refine anything. I don't have to make extra resources, um, but also potentially <clears throat> make some decorations as well. Um, I'm thinking potentially even the chandelier because I have this really I've, I've made chandeliers in Minecraft before and they're it's actually very very nice looking um, like especially with the recent addition of chains in Minecraft so like you know you, you can actually make it accurate it's actually a chain suspending a chandelier it's awesome um, but yeah I'm gonna be I believe we'll be focusing on that today um, get some decorations and perhaps even get some glass for the uh, uh, for the, uh, for the stain, for the thing, uh, for the windows, especially at the back of the, go uh, at the back of the church. Ah, salute, my man, how are you? Gott mit uns. That's right, Gott mit uns. Uh, de Deus cum vobis. Uh, nobis. Deus cum nobis. In, uh, Latin. I love my Latin. And in ancient Greek, uh, Theos metemon. Me de uh, Theos metemon. Any other languages? Any other languages <clears throat> uh, that people can uh, know that for? Um, I'm not sure myself. Hey, we've got five people on. Perfect, perfect. It's always the most nervous part since I'm only very small. So I only usually only get single digit viewers. So it's, it's very nerve wracking when like 
it's literally starting now the stream and there's like two or maybe even zero people on but then people start pouring in over time so that's uh that's uh that's something that's always reassuring anyway um i need to go to a good spot to quarry out just just to quarry out a ton of cobblestone i don't i don't really want to be delving into the into the caves i might do that a little bit later on um but for now i just want a good surface level spot where i can just quarry out cobblestone and that's it um but yes i am also intending on making a very nice bridge uh probably a stone bridge with like a massive support column going down into the lake like that or into the river rather the whatever it's called um but yeah so that's going to be the plan at least at some point some point let oh, oh, oh hang on is that my phone i think that was just my phone is the stream quality yeah stream quality is all right Whew, i freaked out i freaked out for a second there because my phone just uh lagged a little bit um with the stream that's only because my uh my uh hotspot data is pretty crap at the moment um so yeah whatever the very first stream the very first episode of this stream series um was with my phone hotspot and uh it ended very abruptly people weren't here Doki Doki Christian, Doki Doki Christian Club. <laughs> why are there weebs in my chat? What are the why? Why is there a weeb in my chat? Ah, I'm kidding. Nah, nah, everyone, everyone's welcome here, even the dirtiest of sinners. <laughs> but uh, Doki Doki Christian Club says, "Epic place to build the church." Yeah, hundred percent. That's right. It's 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 really fitting because um because you do often see these uh like these more British Isles kinds of churches in these very jagged. Um, cliff-like small island churches. So it's actually a pretty good spot. Anyway, I'm not going to waste time anymore. I need a... Oh, perfect spot. Perfect spot. Hang on, let me lower my mic. Um, I do not have any torches, but that is okay. That is more than okay. Let's just get this stone. Um, actually, I have tons of iron too, so I can just... I'll just use iron pickaxes. Doki Doki Christian Club, laugh, react. You shouldn't be laughing, bro. You know you're hellbound, right? You know the weebs. Weebs aren't aren't uh, aren't uh, permitted in the kingdom of heaven. You know. You know it says that. You know it says that in First Corinthians, right? Neither the neither the. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to get banned by YouTube, but uh, neither the mala the malakoi or the arsenokoi uh, koi tai. You know that means weebs, right? <laughs> oh man, I love having a platform to bully weebs now. I'm kidding. I'm gonna I'm gonna evangelize to them. Anyway, anyway, I hope all your days are well. Tell us in the chat anyway, how are your days going just while I'm digging in the dark here? Your days going well? Um well I presume for American viewers it would be your evening now. Very nice evening. <clears throat> Hopefully. But uh yeah. My day is well eh, nothing oh crap. Crap, it's almost night. Let's go to sleep. Oh look at that view. Just love that. But uh, yeah, my day, nothing's happened yet because of course it is the morning, Saturday morning in Australia. So nothing's really happened. This stream is pretty much, pretty much a first thing in the morning thing for me because it's a good time, not entirely, but <clears throat> good time for both, um, of course, my local, uh, my local mates, Australians <clears throat> and uh, New Zealand as well, but also for the Yanks and the Dixies because at least in American Eastern Standard Time, I've got the formula for converting Australian Eastern Standard Time to American Eastern Standard Time burned in my brain. Um, but the thing, the times are oh crap! I've got enemies already. I was too slow. Um, yeah, the times are the times are good. So it's 7 p.m. evening American Eastern Standard Time in the United States. So it's a pretty pretty good time for a stream, if I might say so myself. Oh, uh, you hear that? That's the sound of heathens burning before the light of God. <laughs> Doki Doki, I am in Germany. Even what? 1 a.m. in Germany. Even worse, bro. What are you doing now? I'm kidding. Nah, Germany. Well, okay. Politically, politically, Germany looks like a bit of a nightmare. Um, but otherwise, depending on where you are, just like scenery and aesthetics among among other things it looks like a very beautiful place i need food yes i need food i think i might have some back at me house good times good times actually you know what? while i'm at it i might also <clears throat> do i have any sugar cane no i don't so i might get on ah perfect moron 
I might get on planting a bunch of sugarcane and then eventually farming cows because those are the necessary ingredients to make books in Minecraft, among, among a couple other things, but those are the primary ingredients. And then with that, we'll be able to make Bibles for the villagers. How good. Oh, man. <clears throat> but first, I need more food. The great thing about the latest Minecraft update is that, well, for one, uh, uh, I think it's been the case for a couple of updates now at least, but uh, fish spawn, fish like actually physically spawn now, so you don't just have to fish for them. But also they spawn everywhere, like so in huge numbers. They can be hard to hit, but it's just easy food. Like you can get a full stack of fish with a full, with just a few minutes of, of just fishing in the, of just diving into the river. Like look at, like hang on. Look, we've got another, we've got another small school right here. Bang. 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 With the quick scopes. Bang. Ooh. Bang. Bang. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, bone meal. Yes, they drop bone meal too, so that's also extremely helpful. Extremely, extremely helpful for things like farming or making a dye. Look at that, already got 11 raw salmon. And when you cook it in Minecraft, it can actually give a big, big food bonus. Very, very helpful. <clears throat> but yes, anyway, while I'm here, I might discuss content. So, I've got coming up, my well, my big thing in the works right now, is basically my long-form video on a positive theology on what what is the God-given role of government. So, it's easy just to make videos responding to heretics, like in this case, Christian status who say, oh, I'll just submit to the government. The government can do whatever it wants. Mo Romans 13 and all that crap. But it is a thousand times more effective and more um, helpful to the faithful to actually make a video that gives a positive theology. And because once you have a positive theology, you have an entire theological framework to respond against uh, Christian statism. Because everything is ultimately an issue of worldview. And if the ground, if you can establish a more coherent ground worldview, in this case, an interpretation of the scriptures, than um, the Christian status, like at the outset, before even addressing the question, the direct question of when to resist tyranny, um, then you can much more easily refute them. They will, they will have almost nothing to respond to. And this is the case for basic, basically, I want to say uh, pretty much pretty much every theological topic. If you can come up with a consistent worldview, a positive theology first, and then you respond to error, because um, that's that's the whole point. We're trying to find truth, so you've got to seek out the truth first. What is the truth of the matter, and then in light of that truth, you respond to error. That's that's what you've got to do. So this video will be very copious in studying the scriptures on what is the role of government, what is the state's role, and uh, yeah, and then in light of that. <clears throat> In the next part, in the next part of that same video, I'll respond to the oh crap, got pillagers. Far we've got the heathens here. Far out. Okay, I've got to got to take them out. But um I'm just a simple man trying to fish. What's wrong with that? Far out, and these pillagers just have to come in here like they own the place. Can they shoot from that far? No, they can't. Okay. <clears throat> but look at them, they just they just like to rock up like they own the place, these absolute losers. Far out. Anyway, let's keep fishing because they can't hit me. I don't want to get too close because otherwise they can hit me. Do I have any bow and arrow? No, I do not. Um, I have tons of fish, however. But they have the positional advantage. <clears throat> and they are trying to swim. How hilarious. Let's see if I can get them to hit each other. Trying to make them all hit this one guy. There we go. Lameo. Alright. Now the trick is, you do not want to kill this guy with the banner. Because what happens is you get a bad omen. And as soon as you enter another village when you uh, with that bad omen, then um, thing over. It'll, cause a, it'll cause a pillager raid. Um, which is <clears throat> virtually impossible to defeat. Except with like full diamond armor, weapons, you name it. Okay, cool. So I avoided the omen. Now I can freely take out these guys. 
Although I might, you know, I might just let one of them take the other out first. Because otherwise it's a bit arduous to do it in the water. As you can see. There we go. And now this... Oh, come on, how did that get me? That's unfair. That's so unfair. Let me just check, make sure everything's up to that. Yeah, cool. Bro, this isn't a very lively chat. Come on, guys. Where's, where's, what happens to your, so to your social life? It used to be a very lively chat. I don't know. Maybe we just don't have very lively people here. Hey, Jeremiah, you're here. Hello, hello, hello. Literally just as I said that, just as I, um, how would I say, disciplined my viewers for not chatting and my man Jeremiah rocks right up. Mate, how are you? I hope, you, I hope your day is nice and blessed. Um, but right now, so what I'm doing right now, in case you just arrived, I was just getting a ton of fish just so I can have a big uh, food supply. And now I'm just going to be focusing on quarrying, um, on, uh, I think on quarrying stone for the church and then build the frame today. It's 7 a.m. in Southeast Asia. Very nice. Very nice. So that means you're a little over two hours um, behind me then. So I'm going to head back to that cave now where I was just getting cobble. I believe it was. Uh, not this one, but this might actually do as well. I just don't have any torches. Which sucks. Actually, I've got the next best thing. Actually, I don't want to fall in. Nah, I'm, I'm, I'm not an idiot. There we go. That can be my light source for now. <clears throat> but yeah, just tons of stone today. That's what I'm getting. And uh, yeah, yeah, that, uh, that I was mentioning before those... Silly pillagers came along. Long form video on uh, on the Christian belief on the role of government. And it's going to be a very it's going to be a very like all my educational type of videos. I want to make them useful so that people can use them, but also use them as a um, as a as a jumping point, as a diving board, so to speak, for their own study. Because I don't because I hate it. Um, I hate it when so this is so before you came, Jeremiah. This is actually what I'm. Um, thing of what I was mentioning, my coming long form video on the role of government according to the Bible, because so many Christians now, especially in this current crisis, um, so many so-called Christians, which is more appropriate, um, declare and declare and just shout, you must submit to the government, submit to the government, wear the mask, blah, 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 all that stuff, um, just because we're Romans 13 and all. And it's, it's one of the most destructive beliefs infecting the church today. It's what has allowed um, mass subservience to tyranny, to evil, um, and made the church a, a docile force with no power at all, uh, contrary to the Great Commission. So my video is going to be focusing, my long-form video is going to be focusing on a positive theology of government, according to the scripture, and then with that theology responding to the heresy that I, I, that I genuinely believe is a heresy of Christian statism, um, which I define as either a lack of uh, a lack of jurisdictional understanding for the state and just assuming and asserting that they can do this just cause and you must submit to them just cause they're the government um, or even a conscious uh, belief that the state has such wide jurisdiction beyond what God has given it in the scriptures, namely justice and order. So that's going to be my video, long form and uh, hopefully a very, how would I describe it? a comprehensive takedown of this heresy. So, uh, yeah, Ooh, up to seven viewers. Stop it. Stop it. Anyone, anyone who's joined or anyone who's already been here, who hasn't had, who hasn't had in the chat, seriously, come in, join the chat. We're, uh, we're, we're vibing here. I don't know. I don't know if I want to say vibing. It's a bit, bit, bit cringe that word in my opinion, the way it's used. Hang on. <clears throat> Queen Victoria T, the good stuff. Very, very good stuff. Oh, man. Yeah, I just, I just noticed, at least while streaming, because I'm talking about stuff at the same time, nighttime comes very quickly in Minecraft. Hopkins says, hi, everyone. Hello, Hopkins. How are you today? Tonight. Slash evening. Whatever, whatever time it is where you are. Hope it's good. Hope your day is splendid. 
Doki Doki says, wow, I didn't know that it's that big of a problem. It's a huge problem, bro. You've maybe if you did, you might not have even noticed it, but I reckon you might have encountered it at least once or twice somewhere, uh, even if online. But we see it especially a lot here in Australia because our our state is among the most tyrannical in the world right now with our lockdowns, um, lockdowning, uh, locking down the healthy, um, and thus the definition of injustice. And uh, so many people who claim to be Christians and even Christian publications like Eternity News, for example, self-proclaimed Christian publications, um, basically championing this bullcrap as well, um, as well as many of their viewers and commenters saying, oh, Romans 13, don't disobey, don't disobey. They even, there was even so there was even a church that illegally, um, at least according to man's law, but according to God's law, they were actually fulfilling the law, um, met um, meet, meeting, like physical meeting. They even live streamed it. And that was an absolute Chad move because meeting up at all for churches is illegal is well, not technically illegal but against public health orders and thus you can get fined huge amounts just to meet in church um i gotta cook my fish first but um yeah and and what happened a christian publication posted about it because like ever everyone was posting about it in the media and all that and all the commenters on that, almost all of the commenters from self-described Christians said, how dare they meet? They disobeyed the law. Romans 13, they didn't love their neighbor. They could kill grandma. It was the most disgusting display I've ever seen in my life. And it's not just that, um, it's not just there, that, that is the Facebook page of Eternity News, but many, many places, but that place especially. you, I actually saw Christians condemning other believers for meeting in person to worship the Lord as he commanded. Like that is the most, that that to me, and I'll assert this in the video as well, and I've asserted it in the past as well, that it is a dividing line. That if you believe the state has the right to stop or to regulate the gathering of Christ's body, then you're an enemy of Christ straight up. It's, it's a bit of a meme at this point. I've just said that. I've said that statement so many times. It's pretty much a meme, I reckon, on this channel. But it's a sad, but I do it. I say it. I say it so many times because it is really bloody true, and it's and it's it's shockingly prevalent everywhere. Christians actually condemning other so people. This is why I like to clarify people who call themselves Christians from actual Christians. So Christians are the ones who meet, the ones who oppose tyranny, stuff like that. The ones who praise this tyranny and condemn other believers for meeting with Christ, uh, meeting meeting with the body of Christ. They are not Christians. They call themselves Christians, but they're not. Simple as that. Because they are denying the very body of the Lord itself. Him, uh, yeah. So, it's evil. It's condemnation. And they like to say things like, oh, but you can still meet with Zoom church. No, you can't. No, you can't. The meaning of the body of Christ is by its very nature a physical gathering. Especially because of what um, other ordinances within that gathering of the body of Christ, or as uh, Catholics, Orthodox, Lutherans, etc. will call them sacraments are necessarily participatory in nature. So like the Eucharist, for example, you take the body and the, uh, you take the bread and the uh, wine, the body and the blood of Christ, right? And that is something that is shared amongst the, the common corporate gathering of the body of Christ. That is the whole bloody point of it. You cannot do that over Zoom, okay? You can hold up, oh, look at, look at me. I got, I got my little bread here and I got my little wine thing here across a digital screen. That is not the gathering of the body of Christ. By definition, it is not. And of course, they'll they'll give other just so stories like, oh well, it's because they didn't have technology back then. That's why they they only gathered in the physical. So basically, accusing God of being su such an absolute idiot that he wouldn't foresee long distance stuff. But even even then, that's not true. Even then, Paul would say, for example, in his letters, um, or at least in one of his letters, I think it's either First or Second Corinthians, when he said that I am there with you in spirit. Right. So they had that concept already of belief of of at least with the Apostle Paul saying, I'm there with you in spirit. And I believe it was in the context, don't quote me, um, but I believe it was in the context of the forgiveness of sins. Um, don't quote me if I'm wrong, but basically saying, I am, I'm there with you in spirit. So there was at least some concept of believers being there in spirit with those, even if they're not physically present. But even then, that is not the norm. That is not a replacement of the physical gathering of the body of Christ. Um, yeah. It's... Um, what should we call it? It's just it, it's 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 actually very difficult to respond to people who claim Zoom church is okay and you, and it's never condemned in the Bible because it is just so flipping obvious in Scripture that the gathering of the body that you don't even have a direct command in Scripture as clear as for example gather every week with the body of Christ because it is just that obvious and assumed it is mentioned so many times in Scripture it is assumed as a norm that you do that you gather 
physically with the body of Christ. <clears throat> Zoom church is just factually, it is factually not the same. You are look, you are not with people, all right? By a mere fact, you are not with other people. You're not gathering with them. You are looking at digital reproductions of their face on your computer or your phone screen with inferior audio and visual quality. That is not gathering. Otherwise, you have to absolutely torture the meaning of the word. You are engaging in telecommunication with one another, but that is not gathering by definition. Very, very simple. So Zoom church is not church by definition. Now, of course, that's not to condemn people who may, for example, in certain scenarios, um, have to zoom in or whatever. That's not to condemn that. It is just simply to say that that is not the norm. <clears throat> if someone wishes nonetheless to see the word, um, or rather hear the word preached, whether, they're, for example, maybe they're sick or maybe they're away or whatever, and they decide to zoom in, watch a church live stream or whatever. Okay, cool. They acknowledge that they are not at the present gathering with Christ's body, but they can still say, I'm there with you in spirit. Um, and this is only temporary. It's not, it's not the norm, but it's, it's a temporary measure. And that is all fine. That is all perfectly fine. Um, but yeah, anyone who says Zoom church um, is just as valid as or Zoom, Zoom telecommunication is just as valid as the physical gathering of the body of Christ. Um, do not take them seriously. That's just a matter of fact. But yeah, that's just the facts of the moment. Um, Jeremiah says, can't really do a protest here in a Muslim majority country. So yeah, even mosques are closed or have limited capacity. Um, but our bishops have raised this issue. Hey, hey, good on you. Um, so you mentioned Southeast Asia and Muslim majority count country. I'm going to presume Indonesia that you're talking about there. <clears throat> um, or, well, that's just my first guess, Indonesia. That's the only one I know that is Muslim majority there. Um, but yeah, Doki says, I agree. Looking forward to the video, bro. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It's going to be, hopefully it'll be a help. Ooh, coal. Yes, I need, I need a lot of coal. But yeah, it's, ex it's exactly what we need now. I want to make videos. I don't just want to make videos on whatever theological niche I like. I want to make things that are time, that are relevant, timely and relevant that people can use now. <clears throat> oh, great gravel. Hopkins says, what do you think about eternal security? <clears throat> so correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not, I'm not the best with the specific theological terminology. Like if, if I understand the concept, I can talk about it easy, but eternal security, meaning, um, oh, how do I describe it? Cause I'm, I'm not, I'm not very good with the specific terms in the moment, but basically, um, is this like, well, to put it colloquially, once save, always save, or like, or sorry, no, rather that Christ has elected you from eternity and you, you will be saved and you will come to saving faith and nothing will change. I assume that's what you mean by eternal security. Let's get back to that cave, shall we? <clears throat> I'm looking at my stream health. Yeah, stream health is excellent. Awesome, awesome. I'm a uh, very... I'm, I'm very encouraged. I'm very happy that my internet is able to keep up because um, I did recently get a power line adapter for Ethernet, which means I can run the internet through the power line of my house and up into my computer because the modem's on the opposite side of the house and I get a good connection. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, that allows me to have very stable connect. And I'm very surprised because I thought my internet was only barely able to stream HD quality gaming, but no, it's streaming buttery smooth. And this is at low latency setting as well. So there's actually a... Um, a good continuity between myself and the chat. Still a few seconds delay, but I reckon I could even bring it down to ultra low latency next time so that there's almost an exact, an almost exact live thing between myself and the chat. But yeah, that'd be awesome. That'd be, that'd be really, really awesome if I can do that. <clears throat> and I'm very happy that the stream series is working. And yes, also apologies for no Christendom Weekly yesterday because it was, it was honestly the worst time to start the series because there's literally nothing happening in the church because the church is simply not gathering bar say church leaders protesting against lockdown and all that, which is very, very rare, sadly. Um, but churches will be opening up again soon, but um, only in a limited sense. I think the government for a short phase, right? For a short phase, once we hit 70% fully vaccinated in my state of New South Wales, um, the government wants to open up church, but only for the vaccinated which is going to be for me the linchpin. That's going to be for me the perfect test to see which churches are faithful and which churches are frankly apostate. 
because if a church turns away um, believers because of vaccination status, nothing to do with whether they're actually sick or not, but just purely because they don't have a government mandated vaccine pass, that's how I believe you'll be able to tell um, they're an apostate church. They're not true believers. So I actually want to do that. I actually want to go around and ask churches and try to attend churches. But if they ask for my pass and I say, no, I don't have one. And they say, sorry, you can't come. Then I'm just going to, okay, fair enough. I know to avoid you in the future. I know not to rely on you when the real crisis comes. Or when, when, when other greater crises come, I know that I cannot rely on you and that you are not a brother in Christ. Simple as that. <clears throat> Hopkins says, once saved, always saved. I'm still relatively undecided about denomination at the moment, but the idea still makes sense to me after all. If you're, new, if you're never worthy of salvation, how could you become... If you're never worthy of salvation, how could you become unworthy? So, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it depends on the, the, it's really, yeah, it does depend because the interesting thing about this, about once save, always save is that, well, for one, it's inherently monogistic. So that is, so monogism versus synergism, for those who don't know, monogism basically saying God is the only active agent in salvation. He is the sole one who does, who, who can decide who's saved and who's not. Synergism says that God does the, the, the brunt of the legwork, but man still has a quote unquote free will to decide for God. Um, so ultimately the once save always save is inherently monogistic, but not all monogists accept it. So Lutherans, um, for example, hang on one second. That's my, that's, that's my brother. Anyway, anyway, but, um, yeah, <clears throat> so Lutherans do not, uh, again, terminology, not my best thing, but Lutherans do not believe in has a oh, far out. Anyway, anyway, that was just my brother. Um, but yeah, so so Lutherans will argue that God is the so that man is incapable of choosing God. That God, oh, come on, that God is the only one who can free up the will to accept Him. But they will argue that nonetheless, it is possible for one who has a regenerate will to fall away from um to fall away from the faith. Um, so they'll argue that whereas. <clears throat> Um, reformed, so proper reformed will say that, um, no, that will never happen. The perseverance, there's the perseverance of the saints, um, who will say that once you're, once God has elect you and regenerated your will, you will never fall away. Simple as that. Um, but yeah, you will never fall away from the true faith and, uh, great arguments for both on one hand. And then ultimately I believe, I believe that the reform position is superior, um, but not without caveat, because um, on one hand, I believe John Christ's statements in multiple places, but most particularly John 6, John chapter 6, where he says, uh, my sheep, like for example, my sheep hear my voice um, and I will lose none of them. That seems very strongly to entail a, uh, how would I say, a perseverance of the saints. On the other hand, Lutherans uh, and others will, well, everyone else basically, will point to passing statements in, for example, the book of Hebrews and in second Peter, I believe, um, which imply quite heavily imply, I will admit that it is possible for one who has been saved by Christ's blood to fall away, um, from the faith. And I'll ultimately say the reform position is superior because, um, because it relies on in context, fuller theological state, uh, statements right that are more comprehensive more detailed about the topic whereas the um the position against the perseverance of the states more or less relies on passing statements um that are not entirely related to that very topic which i believe would fall under the the, the clear interpreting the unclear i believe that the clearer statements of larger theological treatises in scripture would be more relevant to that but um, I, I will say those passages they're not they're not they're not pushovers nonetheless I think I think 
Um, they, they have they have made me raise eyebrows before. They seem to imply that true regenerate can fall away. So I'm not going to dismiss them. Um, that will require more discussion elsewhere. Hey, Jeff, how are you, mate? Glad to see you here. Hopkins says anarcho brotherism. <laughs> the heck is that? Uh, Andrew Bailey, fellow fellow weeb here, found an excellent manga about diving the other day called Master of Sea. Thoroughly enjoying it. Is manga just a, just as haram as anime? <laughs> well, yeah, of course, of course, of course, it's just as haram as anime. Maybe anime is a worse manifestation of it, but they're both haram. They're both um, they're both in the Hebrew term cherem, um, same as haram. But uh, yeah, cherem in the uh, in the Hebrew scriptures, basically anything that was cherem was devoted to destruction. So entire cities were devoted to destruction. Or um, uh, certain objects, actually, which were sacrificed to the Lord, were also uh, cherem, devoted to destruction. Um, Jeremiah says, I kind of like the Lutheran view of it. They, in the end, leave it a mystery because, yes, there is room for discussion, but it is, again, something God does and humans cannot understand. We differ here. Uh, yeah, no, I'm, 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 I'm totally open to the Lutheran view as well. If, if they can cogently argue that John 6 can be reconciled, um, and that it is a better, and that ultimately, just ultimately that it's a better explanation of the scriptures that even regenerate saints can fall away by their will. Then I, then I would accept that if they can prove that from the scripture, although I do believe that the perseverance of the saints is better proved. Um, yeah. And that even if it's, even if it's not a very easy thing to do, that those other passages in second Peter and Hebrews can be better explained, can, can be, uh, uh, satisfactorily explained, um, by the reform position. Because ultimately, I believe it relies on John 6 and other major, major passages directly focused on the topic that if the Lutherans cannot provide a superior explanation for those, then perseverance of the saints is more or less well, a required doctrine. And we are thus obligated to explain um, to explain Hebrews and Second Peter in light of that. <clears throat> um, so, Jeremiah, I don't have a specific view now. Yeah, fair enough. Doki doki. Yo, Jeff, enjoyed your latest video. Yeah, Oath, Oath, Jeff. Oh, Jeff, I haven't seen your um your latest um stream on um Solar reacting to opponents of Solar Feeder. I believe that was what it's on. I'm still gonna watch it. I'm still gonna watch it, but I will be, Jeff. I will be. Hopkins says anarcho brotherism ideology where the brother does a little tro- <laughs> the brother does a little trolling. Fair enough, fair enough. But anyway, I think I have enough stone to get the frame of this church happening. Um, hmm, God willing. Um, I'm I'm still I'm still trying to think of the interior. I've got I've got a chandelier design well set in my head. Um, the interior, though, I'm not sure. I've got to look at these images again of old Celtic churches. What do their floors look like? What do their pews look like? Among other things, <clears throat> I've got to get that happening. Oh, nine concurrent viewers. Yes, yes, just like old times. And by old times, I mean last week. Ah, look, I'm hungry. Good thing I have 25 cooked salmon. In reality, though, I hate fish. I, I just don't eat fish. I hate it. I genuinely hate it. <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> okay. I'm thinking either the back or the front will have the bell tower. I'm not sure what's better yet, but either way, it'll be easy to remove the roof on either side. Um, for when I decide. So I'm just going to make the roof <clears throat> as it is. Actually, in a sec, I think once I complete this level, once I complete this height of the of the roof, then I think I will add, I will go down and get sand, rather. Sand for the church, uh, for, the, for the glass. So that I can make the glass windows for the church. Ooh, 12 viewers. Stop it. I think that's a record. Far out. We've got 12 viewers happening now. Hello, brothers and sisters. <laughs> Jeremiah, Q, uh, question. What would be the argument to prove Christianity is true? Mine is the resurrection of Jesus. I mean, <laughs> the argument. I mean, yeah, I'd honestly say the argument would be the resurrection. If you can demonstrate the resurrection is, uh, is historically the most plausible explanation for the data that we have then yeah, I believe that would be an ultimate argument for Christianity. But I also believe things like um, the the continuity of the scripture, the preservation of Israel, despite being a minor nation and like pretty much all their neighbors being obliterated to obscurity um, throughout their time. And yet Israel persevering. And then even when Israel finally did kind of fade away as a people, 
um, the religion lived on and ended up thriving again. Um, prophecy as well. I reckon it's a cumulative argument. All these things together, the the the, pers- the preservation of the religion of Israel, of Israel itself, and then the religion of Israel through Christianity, um, the resurrection, uh, prophecy, um, and then even even just the general sensibleness of how the Christian worldview best explains how our world works, how people work, and all that. Um, all of these, all of these together, cumulative case, I believe, would say. Christianity, but the, the the Christian faith is true. It is true. It's a cumulative case, I'd argue. Um, but yeah, and 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 of course, a, a like unbelievers and all would like to say, oh, but 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 other religions claim prophecy and and miracles and bloody bloody blah. And to which I'd say, you, the thing you got to do is call their bluff. Okay, okay, cool, cool. Name some. Raise to me some miracles and prophecies by other faiths, which are even as plausible as the Christian faith. Not to mention same in scale, number, and all that stuff. They love to claim that, oh, but what about other religions who claim this? And yeah, they never provide examples. So you just got to call them on their bluff on that. Um, I, for one, can say at least that looking into the claims of Islam, they collapse very quickly. <laughs> um, but that's just the, that's the, but that's, the, that's, that's my brief, that's my brief question of it. That's, that's, that's my brief answer. Big Nick, Bible, the original history book. Amen, brother. Amen. Actually, there were historical forces from before the Bible. Yeah, okay. Cringe died. <laughs> oh, man. Um, anyway. That top bit. Ah, oh, yes. Still got to do that roof. Actually, I'm going to make... Should I make ladders? Actually, no. I'll just, I'll just continue with staircase back up. Um, on the outside. Yes. Uh, bit of a convoluted staircase, but what can you do? A big nick. One of, yeah. Bible's one of the original history books. That's right. That's right. Just the historical scale of the Christian scriptures are, and Israel scriptures, even just Old Testament alone, the historical scale of it, but also that combined with the New Testament and the Church Fathers and all that, it's just unparalleled, unparalleled by any other religion. And that to me, um, that to me shows, shows a protection, a divine protection. Um, Doki Doki, don't you hold a presuppositionalism? Yes and no. Um, I do believe there's value in evidential apologetics um, and ultimately because I believe that if our Christian faith is true, it will be borne out by the evidence and I do believe it is. Um, although I don't think presuppositionalists um, deny that. Um, I'm not fully, I'm not like a full-on super hardcore presup guy. Um, not At least I don't go as hardcore on them. I, I don't really I don't really normally do apologetics for atheism anyway because like that's the whole point of my channel is that apologetics against unbelieving atheists is a dime a dozen. You find them everywhere. Some are crap. Some are really, really good. So I don't really want to tread that field. I want to provide rather the base worldview so that such apologetics is true, sharp, and effective. Because many, many otherwise decent apologists don't really have their theology defined, uh, which is problematic because depending on your theology, how your theology is will greatly affect your apologetics. I think I said that on the original introductory video for this channel, which is still up, you can find it. Um, my main motto basically is good the- good apologetics requires good theology. And that's what I live by. That's the whole point of my channel. Uh, I will do nonetheless apologetics against heresy. Um, so people who claim to be speaking of a Christian worldview, um, among other things, and I'll definitely respond to them. But maybe I'll, every now and then I'll interact with unbelievers. But yeah, to an extent, I hold to a to like pre-sub method, you know. Um, insofar as I say, insofar as I question them, what's what's your worldview, blah, blah, blah. Um, I don't like to press the claim that without the Christian triune God, your worldview won't make sense and all that. Just because it gets into the weeds a lot, especially if there's like a really well thought out unbeliever, it can get into the weeds quite a bit. I do ultimately believe that the Christian worldview is necessary. Um, and that ultimately, if you dig deep enough, every other worldview collapses. Um, so to that extent, yeah, somewhat, I'm somewhat pre up and, uh, and yeah, I do genuinely believe you push atheists far enough and, uh, their worldview simply collapses. 
Sweet! I need torches. Okay, and then I, for that I need wood. And for wood I need trees. Far out. Matt Bell, I started re-watching How to Answer the Fool. I find it confusing because I didn't grow up with pre-sub, but really interesting. Okay, I haven't heard of that. I haven't watched it myself, so yeah, I might, maybe I'll check it out one day. I say that about a lot of things, but maybe I won't because I'm just that busy. <laughs> Um, I don't want to take out that tree. That's the village tree. Oh, yes. I planted these behind my house. Good, good, good. Uh, Jeremiah says, better blood of the building or it becomes a mob. So yeah, yeah. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm trying to get torches. <clears throat> Actually, speaking of mob spawners, maybe I should make one at some point. Because they're very, very good. They can be difficult to make, but uh, they work pretty well. Although, it may be slightly harder to make them now that um, with the latest Minecraft update, and I'm playing on it right now, although it's an experimental snapshot of it, um, mobs no longer spawn in light levels above zero. So normally they used to spawn at light levels seven downwards, but now they only respawn at light level zero. So the place has to be pitch black um, in order for mobs to spawn, which is very, very interesting. <clears throat> <clears throat> and oh, will I mention that now? I'm gonna I'm gonna save it to the end. I'm gonna show something very special at the end, uh, especially for people who are. Uh, how would I describe it? So something I'll, I'll I'll save it to the very end of this stream, but uh, let's just say something for people who. Well, to be blunt, people who want to contribute to my content and to my mission. I'll sa I'll save it to the very end. Though. I'll save it to the very end. Um, but yes, now we have a lot of wood. Let's begin making those torches. Perfect, we've got a ton of torches now. Doki Doki says, I'm reading the Sunnah of Moh at the moment. It's quite hilarious, but what stands out is most in the, is the inconsistency in terms of justification. The Sunnah of Moh. Is that... Sunnah. That's in the... I'm probably going to have so much hate in there. Isn't that, isn't, is that in the Quran? I'm totally unfamiliar with it. Actually, hang on, hang on. One second. I've got my Quran with Christian commentary just on the other side. Islamic tradition. Okay. Well, whatever. I've got my Quran with Christian commentary right here. It's, it's really, really cool. I've got a general translation of the Quran with commentary explaining um, where it's uh, thing or where it's consistent with Christianity, where it differs, historical context and all that. Um, yeah. Yeah. There you go. That's too many, too many chapters. I don't want to read it. <laughs> But yeah, I've got that, so there you go. Islamic tradition. So you're saying it's inconsistency in terms of justification. So um, explain that. Explain in what ways it's inconsistent and all that. That'd be interesting to hear because I, I'm no, no shocker to me there that Islamic tradition is inconsistent. I mean, you just got to look at the Quran for that. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so now to light up the church. No mobs in here? Good. Just as long as it's not light level zero, it'll be fine. Yeah, that's good enough for now. Sure. There we go. Yeah, it actually kind of looks nice. Um, now I'm going to get, you know, I'm going to get the, the sand for the glass windows. So that I just need to go down here. Oh, man. But yeah, my brother came in earlier because he wants to go down to Bunnings Warehouse with me. Um, for those who don't know Bunnings Warehouse, if you're in the United States, basically Home Depot. So just think of it that way. Although probably bigger because they, all their stores are basically massive, massive warehouses 
Although I guess that might be the case with Home Depot. Not 100% sure. Oh, no, I don't think it is necessarily the case with Home Depot. I've seen it before. But yeah, this really big, really big tools and construction gardening place. Oh yeah. Sand for the glass. I think I've got more than enough there, but I'll just get a little bit more. Big Nick, Home Depot plus Costco. Very good way to describe it. Yes, it's big. It's it's it is basically a Costco for home. It's a Home Depot Costco. All that fish far out. Costco layout. That's right. Yep, yep. Very very big. Ah, oh, come on, die. How didn't they die the first hit? Doki Doki says, I find justification in Christianity very plausible. It perfectly unites God's mercy and justice. My Muslim friend told me that for them, it's like a scale of good and bad. They, yeah, I've basically seen that myself. Um, <clears throat> more, more or less, yeah. And that the way that Allah, I've seen, I've, I've seen at least one story in Islamic tradition. The way that Allah um, treats justification is extremely arbitrary as well. So you got the weight, the weights of good and bad. But also, um, it can be extremely arbitrary the way that Allah's quote unquote mercy is treated. Like, I remember seeing, um, whatchamacallit, there's one story to, to awfully paraphrase it. There was a murderer, like, just a, just a straight up cold blooded murderer. Um, and I think the Prophet Muhammad himself said, um, if you go within X amount of distance from this place, then your sins will be forgiven. Um, and then he gets, he's a bit, he, at some point by this deadline or something, I'm not sure, I'm, I forget what it is, but basically by this deadline of sorts, he's not close enough. He's just a little bit off so that he wouldn't be forgiven for his murder. So then Allah shrinks the land between him and the distance and, and, and the place so that he's close enough and now his sins are forgiven. And I remember reading that, I'm just like, what in the hell? hell is that like it is straight that was just straight up munted that's your god really really i mean complain about the galvanist the calvinist god all you want at least he's flipping consistent you know at least there's actually a theological for base basis for it all you know whereas Allah's just like yeah i want this guy <laughs> oh man um, Jeremiah, oh, BDW, have you ever heard of the uh, Sandakan death marches? 1800 plus uh, stuck in Borneo, World War II with British soldiers, only six. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've heard of those. I've been to the, um, so I've been to the Australian War Memorial in our capital in Canberra. And uh, they actually have a big, big um, wall, like this dedicated room with a big wall of, I think everybody, um, all Australian soldiers who, who perished in those death marches. It's very sad, very, very barbaric. Um, by the Japanese. Very, very evil. Um, yeah. Doki Doki Christian Club, if your good deeds outweigh the bad ones, you're going to heaven. Yeah, yeah. So pretty much, pretty much the exact opposite of what the Apostle Paul claims, which is probably why, um, Islam, eh. Which is probably why Islam really does not like Paul because, uh, he totally goes against their means of justification. There's his, do your good work, Allah will fill the contract, and yay, you're in heaven. <laughs> Welcome to heaven. <laughs> Immigration status stamped. <laughs> Whereas God's like, out of my pure goodwill and mercy, you are justified, my son. No matter what you have done, I will overlook those sins. It's beautiful. It's truly beautiful. Um, Doki Doki Christian Club. I've heard that story from James White. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. There you go. I've heard him mention it um, as well. It's It's... It's, it really is wild. Again, I'm, I'm not 100% on the details of it, like the exact details, but that's basically the gist of the story. A murderer um, is forgiven of his sins because he's within a distance of a certain place and Allah goes out of his way to make sure he is, which is very bizarre. Not the same thing as showing divine mercy for a murderer. 
uh, a divine grace for a murder, like the Apostle Paul, for example. It's not the same thing because Allah actually made a means of forgiving it and that is literally be within an X distance of a place and that's it. Whereas in the true faith, um, justification is not based on any merits or any criteria whatsoever except the pure mercy of God. And that's the whole point of it. That's the beauty of it. Uh, but nonetheless, um, with that justification, good works will necessarily result from it. Um, yeah. Anyway, what was I doing? Ah, yes, making, making glass. All right, actually, I've got to, I'm going to briefly look up how to make stained glass. Minecraft stained glass. Because I do not exactly remember. Also, while that's, hang on. Actually, stained glass recipe. Oh, yep, easy, easy. Anyway, actually, I'm going to tell my friends. I'm going to plug my stream again to my to my mates. Jeremiah says, kind of funny that the Islamic claim that the Gospel of John, the Gospel that really clearly shows the deity of Christ, was a later Gospel, and Mark, the first Gospel, doesn't show Christ's divinity. Although you could, if in that argument, Romans came before Mark, which clearly states in Romans 9, 5, Christ is God. Yeah, that's right. It's 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 everywhere. For people to claim that the Gospels evolved and that, it's kind of flipping hilarious, because clearly, as we know through Paul, for example, it was kind of a given that Christ is Lord. I believe... Um, <clears throat> I believe the work of Larry Hurtado. Um, he has, I have his book in my bookshelf down there, Lord Jesus Christ. And basically he shows, um, even though I think he does have a more or less heterodox view in some cases, um, at least from what I heard, I think I heard him on a panel once say that the historical Christ, quote unquote, didn't actually say he was God or whatever, um, which is cringe. Um, but... I do believe his work, Lord Jesus Christ, basically concludes that at least immediately after the death of Christ, he was considered Lord. Um, so, yeah. And, and, and it literally makes no sense to call him the Lord and then to say he was the Lord who did this in the Old Testament and that was what Yahweh was doing and then to not conclude that he's God. That's just absolutely silly. Absolutely silly. But yeah, earlier books like Romans, like Paul's letters and all that, which clearly ascribe deity to Christ, before the Gospels, um, before, like, well, yeah, arguably before any of the Gospels were made, um, and then to suddenly say that that development reversed course at the outset of the Gospels and then it eventually redeveloped, it's just absolutely silly. Unless they want to argue that the Gospel of Mark and Matthew and all that, um, they were just made by non, by uh, Christians who didn't believe in the deity of Christ, which is absolutely freaking silly because now that's, because ultimately it relies on an argument of silence that, Mark and Matthew are not explicit with Christ's deity, therefore they didn't believe it, which is absolutely silly because if that was already a belief in the Christian milieu, then there's no reason then to say that them not mentioning it means they don't believe it is absolutely silly. Like, I don't have to mention all of my beliefs on every single piece of content I output. Otherwise, it's just, it's just so silly. Big Nick, I love people who use the same excuse. Well, this book of the Bible was written by a human and humans are flawed whenever a certain passage destroys their argument. Yeah, case in point, uh, God is gray. So look at one of my older videos, um, one, of, or one of my bigger videos rather, uh, in response to God is gray on the issue of uh, homosexuality in the Bible. Um, and she makes that exact argument. Um, and she, she, she still tries to argue that Paul didn't believe, didn't wasn't specifically ascribing sin to homosexuality, but to pedophilia, which is freaking silly and I refute that. But even then, to cover her behind, she still says, well, Paul Paul admitted he was a human who could have error. So even, even then, he could still be wrong. And theref therefore, therefore, homo is okay. It's just, it's just so funny. Absolutely hilarious. Ominous banner. Um, okay, I need the right... Oh, yes, perfect. So this is the dye I want. I want yellow glass. Um, any more of this? 
need more dandelion. I need more dandelion. Is there any more back here? Yes, there is. Actually, I might just need the two for now. I think I'll even need more than two. Alright. Perfect. Uh-huh. Oh, sorry, that's the die itself. Just need one more bit of die. That's good enough for now. I think I might... Um, whatchamacallit, I might change up the... How do you make glass panes again? I'm trying to remember how to make glass panes. Uh, hang on. Minecraft glass pane. Oh, yep, yep. Yep, cool, got it. Alright. Doki Doki, are you familiar with Granville Sharp's rule? Do you see it as a valid argument? Oh, yeah, 100%. Um, yeah. Um, actually, oh, hang on. One second, just checking something out. Secundus, just fixing something up. Yep. So yeah, it is actually very much valid. It's a bit complicated to explain, but TLDR, um, with the right conditions. Oh no, why did I do that with these ones? Darn it. Oh well. Actually, it did give me. Oh yeah, it does give you, it actually gives you a lot of glass paint, so I don't care. That's it, yep. <sighs> Six of glass. But yeah, anyway, TLDR, yeah, I believe it's very powerful. It's very, very clear, in my opinion, for the deity of Christ. Oh, look at this. This is looking beautiful already. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Not bad, not bad, eh? But yeah, Granville Sharp's rule is a very, very, very valid, um, very value, valid argument. Can you dye glass panes? I'm not sure. Let's check that out. I don't have any more dandelion. Ah, whatever. I don't, I don't care. Hey, hey, I've done, I've done what I came to do. This. I'll probably add more on the sides. I'll probably add some more pain, uh, some more stained glass on the sides. But this for now, I reckon looks pretty darn good. I might, I might spice it up a little bit with another color. But I think this looks pretty good right now. Logos, hey, my man Logos is here. Bella sunt fenestrae. Sick, sick, sick. Hi, kes bella fenestrae. Ut vales, Logos. Ut vales, odier. Uh, oh, yeah. For those who... For the plebs who don't understand, that is classical Latin we're speaking together. Uh, Doki says, I prefer Rainbow Windows TBH. <laughs> That's a ban. I'm kidding. You're all good. Uh, but, uh, no. I, I mean... I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, well, not it's not rainbow per se. But multicolored glass pane, glass, stained glass windows are, are pretty, pretty darn good. Logos. Festus sum se yam tui dis uh, Festus, hang on, I've got to, I've got to read that slowly. Festus sum, uh, seyam tuitskis. Ah, said, said. Festus sum, said yam, uh, tuitskis. Said yam tuitskis. Six, six, six. Semper, semper skio, uh, semper skio, um, that semper skio esse tu fessus tu nam nam fessus nam semper es fessus semper tu es fessus cur cur semper semper tu es fessus oh man my man my man matt bell 
Um, hey, the rainbow is originally a biblical thing. After all, it's why Ken Ham's arc has rainbows everywhere. I mean, yeah, that's it, 100%. The seven-striped rainbow, mind you. The seven-striped rainbow, including indigo. Um, yes, whereas the the uh, sodomy flag, the sodomy national flag, excludes the... Uh, makes it only six colors, which is just a beautiful proof of the reality of typology. Um, in that the seven colors of the rainbow, seven being the holy number, God, six being the number of the fall of man, of sin... Um, it's just, just beautiful. I reckon that was, it might have been a deliberate design, whether by the human creators of the gay flag or by Satan uh, in his inspiration of them. Logos dikis, recte dikis. Sick. Sick. Semper dico recte. <laughs> Matt Bell. Haha, yep. Big Nick. Must, uh, me must crusade to take back the rainbow as ours. 100%. I, I presume you mean we. But I guess me as well will work. Uh, Logos Logistics dicit Solum uh, Solum quattro horas dormi vi ego priore nocte ergo sum fes Ah, sick, 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 sick. Nekes es Nekes es dormire Nekes es dormire Plurum Nekes es plur Nekes es plure dormire Uh Yeah, uh, plu, plu, how do you say more than, uh, plur, plure, uh, plure quam quattro horas. Uh huh. But yeah, as you can see, as you, as you, but people can probably see, I'm trying to get more conversational with my Latin, because that's ultimately what I'm building up to. Um, and with my man, my man, uh, Logos, my man Logos in particular, um, he's going to be helping me out. Um, And this is going to be related to what I'm talking about, what I'm going to be talking about at the end of this stream um, with contributors, but basically helping out with uh, with Latin, so to speak, myself and others who have the opportunity, um, and also and also potentially um, when we're both ready to join me on basically a Latin spinoff of this series, because um, I want to have a version of this series that's entirely in Latin, entirely spoken in Latin, and I believe Logos has raised my man Logos here has raised interest in joining, which would be freaking awesome. Uh, Logos dicit octo horas dormire de beo sic. Um, but yeah, and uh, it's basically going to be the same same name, but just in Latin. In Latin. Uh, super hunk cubum. Super hunk cubum. Yeah, sorry, I got stuff in my nose. But yeah, it is going to be really awesome. Really, really awesome. Really, really fun. But yes, anyway. Really glad you're here, Logos. Glad everybody's here, of course. Ah, oh, very fun times. Logos, tell me what you think of these windows. I think I think they're pretty. I think it's a pretty strong game. I might add like another color below them, but I think right now, um, I think right now it's uh, pretty so. Super un carbon. <laughs> Super un carbon. <laughs> oh man. Uh, no 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 no. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I don't, I don't exactly want to make, uh, I don't want to get a jihad on my back. <laughs> I'll say that. <laughs> anyway, uh, roofs. Yes. Um, so I'm going to make stair roofs now as well. <laughs> oh, my man. Eh. I'm going to need all the stair roofs I, I can. Oh man. Great times. The uh, logos quid uh, quid argi with hodie, uh, quid argi argi with hodie, uh, quem no uh, quod non est uh, esse fessus. Oh man, it's it's diff it's difficult, especially because there's very very few people who can actually speak, like converse in Latin, obviously compared to current languages. But uh, it's possible. I'm getting there, and it's really really fun. Superon can, superon carbon I difficil ecclesiam meam et mo no potes resistere. That is 
so stupid. I love it. <laughs> I have to read that again. Superant kabam aidificab ecclesiam meam et Mohammed non potes resistere. Oh my gosh! For people who just who didn't get that, he quoted the the passage: "You are Peter, and on this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail." <laughs> my man Logos just said. Uh, upon this Kaaba, I will build my church, and and it will not be possible to resist Muhammad. <laughs> oh, and no, uh, no, and and no, sorry, and Muhammad is not able to resist. <laughs> oh, that is good. Top meme, good memes, very good memes, logos. I love it. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's very good. I'm still trying to think of how to do this interior. Uh, actually, you know, I might do the chandelier. Oh, no, it's going to take more effort because I need chains and all that. And that's going to take ages. Recte traducis. Quid, uh, quid est traducis? Non, non scio hoc verbum. Traducis. 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 Hmm. Um... What now? My mind's blanked up all of a sudden. Um, so building this church, glass, ah, sugar canes. You know, what? I'm gonna get. I'm gonna put this on hold for now because I need to get more stone, of course. Actually, you know what? As well, I'm gonna make some chests just to dump stuff in because inventories get full very, very quickly in this game. Uh, da, 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 da. Duh, 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 duh. Yeah, it's good enough. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go looking for cobble. But before that, just before that, I'm gonna go look for sugar cane, so I can start um, properly growing and farming it, and uh, and then from that I can make bibles for people, for the villagers specifically. Our villagers people. That's a, that's a, that's that's the real question. That's the real question to put in the chat, people. Our villagers people. Our villagers made in the image of God. That's a real question, I reckon. <laughs> uh, Jeremiah, which Minecraft YouTubers do you watch in your free time? None, actually. That's the funny part. I I never watch Minecraft streaming. <laughs> I rarely watch streamers to begin with. Really, the only streamer I watch, um. Actually, no, I can't really think. Yeah, no, only very sporadically. Very, very sporadically. Um, do I ever watch streamers? There's no sugar cane here, really. Nothing. All right. Actually, no. Oh, no, hang on. I've got, I've got it up in my, um, in my house chest. I remember that. Yeah, I've got it up there. So I'm going to grab it and I'm going to start a small sugar cane farm. Perfect, perfect. Ah, logos di chi traducere e scrivere verba quae sunt una lingua in lingua altera. Ah, exempli, ah, exempli gratia. Potes traducere verba latina in verba graeca. Sic, 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 sic. Okay, yes, yes, yes. I know that. Now, well, now I know it. Traducere. Traducere. Et traduco. Traduco, traducis, traducit, traducimus. Traducistis, traducunt, sic traducunt, traducunt. Uh, sic, uh, tra, tradivi, no, 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 tra, traduci, traduci, uh, traduci, uh, bene, uh, puto, put, uh, Puto, puto ego traducere bene. Uh, nam amo traducere. Et, uh, et, uh, mul et uh, multe, multe ago. Et multe ago tantum. Um, I need a good spot for my sugarcane farm. Oh, I don't have sugarcane. What? I thought I had sugarcane here. 
Ah, okay, gonna have to look for it elsewhere. That's fine, that's fine. So, there should be some at this river somewhere. Ooh, nice lag. It's a sucky thing about Minecraft Java Edition, like Notch, literally the only reason Notch made Minecraft with Java is because that was just the easiest, that was just really the only thing you knew. So he made Minecraft in Java, and it's an inefficient mess because of it. <laughs> Whereas you play Bedrock Edition, which was purposely made on a more efficient language, I think it's C++, and it runs buttery smooth. <laughs> With all the same stuff too, how funny, how funny. Uh, will be a sugar cane, will be a sugar cane. This is going to take a while, isn't it? Oh, I don't even have a bed. Okay, no, I need to take a bed. I need to take a bed with me. Otherwise, that is going to be a big pain in the bum once night time comes. Mm, yes, but uh, Lo uh, for Logos and for anyone else who's only just recently arrived, I mentioned earlier at the begin uh, near the beginning of the stream, uh, in, case you in case you weren't there, um, whatchamacallit, that my next long form video, um, is on civil government, the jurisdiction of government. And, uh, yeah, that, what is, what, what does scripture say is the role and the jurisdiction of civil government? Because that is, it's a concept that is absent in so many Christians' minds. We don't have this idea of thinking in jurisdiction. We just think, oh, this is a good thing that happens. Therefore, government or whatever other body authority we think of has the right to do it just because it's a good thing. But there is a real dimension of jurisdiction that people do not consider and people must consider. Um, yeah, because it's, it's simply a, how would I describe it? Do I have a, do I have cheers? It's, it's, it's simply the only way that well, the world will be able to work with order. Otherwise without jurisdictional thinking, um, if you don't think in terms of jurisdiction, then it's there. You could have no argument against someone walking into your house and stealing every every bit of fast food, every sharp object in your house for your own good because it conceivably could be a good thing to do so. So yeah, jurisdictional thinking is necessary and my, my, my video's core argument is basically that scripture is clear that the jurisdiction of government is to punish evildoers and to maintain order. That's it. Very easy. Uh, well, that is order once chaos breaks out, you know? Um, and it was not given the authority to do anything else and by the necessary presupposition that authority is necessarily limited to how it's given. So if someone gives a lower person authority, then the, the, they are that person is necessarily restricted to the authority that they were given. They cannot extend beyond it. Um, you cannot assume that they can extend beyond that authority just because. And so in light of scripture, only granting the state the authority to punish evil, maintain order in light of chaos, um, it is thus illegitimate for the state to be going anywhere else, such as, for example, in education, in healthcare, and all that stuff. And especially, it goes directly against the state's uh, um, role of punishing evil and not punishing good by locking up uh, people who are not infected with the virus, who are not spreading it around, so on and so forth. So yeah, absolutely necessary. Absolutely necessary. Big long form video. Big helpful and helpful to the believers. Jeremiah says, but bedrock is more difficult in the sense that in Java, it is easier to find resources. Really? I wouldn't know that. I mean, well, they did make resources harder to an extent to find in the latest update for Java. Well, for both versions, really. Um, Logos says, Juris jurisdiction equals ju equals jurisdictio. Uh Ubius dictator. Sick! That's right, that's right. Dictio, dictio, di yes, dictio, dictio. A dictio. So, yeah, I love those, love those Latin roots. The best thing. Oh, best thing ever. Talking Latin. I love it. I just love Latin too much. Much easier to learn than Greek, that's for sure. Both because the language itself is, in my opinion, simpler, but also because you just have so many more resources for it. So yeah, what I'm doing now is exploring the world for sugarcane because I need to start a sugarcane farm in order to start printing Bibles. 
Uh, Logo says, Quando tu loquiris de ordine et caio uh, puto ego de <laughs> Warhammer 40k. Um, Quando tu loquiris de ordine et caio <laughs> puto ego de puto ego de Warhammer 40k. So if I understood you right, um, if I understood you right, how much am I going to talk about order and chaos? Um, oh no, whenever you talk about order, okay. Oh no, no, no. Whenever you talk about order and chaos, I can, I think of Warhammer 40k. Oh, come on. Surely Warhammer doesn't have the exclusive rights over the ideas of order and chaos. But I mean, I know. It's, it's, I can understand why you think of that. Especially because one of my friends, uh, if he's watching, he'll know exactly who he is. Um, is, is just addicted to Warhammer 40k. He will, he will, in serious discussions on like morality and faith, he will actually bring up examples from 40k lore and stories. <laughs> it's just so funny. <laughs> This is hilarious. Oh man. Erecte intelligis. Woohoo! Intelligo recte. But yeah, it really is just hilarious. <laughs> oh man, so much. I just see Warhammer so much around me. People just talk about it all the time, all the time. Oh man. I get tired very quickly. Um, <laughs> just because I'm not the fittest person ever. And I've unfortunately kind of slowed down with my with my regular exercise and running. Uh, don't talk about politics until you've read theory. Mm. I mean... I don't know who you're quoting there. I presume it might be like one of those satire quotes. Oh, I don't know. Theory equals Warhammer 40k. <laughs> okay. okay, no, I get you. I get you. <laughs> oh, this is a nice forest. Actually, I think I saw it before when I was first, because this is where I actually first traveled up to my current spot. And I'll remember to follow the river back home. I'm just trying to follow along the river so that I can actually find some sugar cane. Apparently sugarcane just doesn't exist in this world. Come on, where is it? There should be sugarcane here. Ooh, we got snowberries. What the heck? That's always very good. Ooh, hello. Ooh. Ooh, okay, this is good. So what you're seeing here is a tree that if you dig directly underneath it, it will lead to a lush cave biome. Um, I don't really have any use for it right now, but that's just cool to know. I might come back here at some point. Oh, come on. I need sugar cane, brah. Give me the sugar cane. challenge just to find some sugar cane, eh? <laughs> I was just thinking of this idea because I was talking with Logos. Um, I was talking with my mate here, Logos, yesterday. I'm um, talking about my idea for Cursed Orgberg, as we call it. Orgberg being the guy who wrote this uh, Latin textbook, so to speak, Lingua Latina Per Se Illustrata. <laughs> And basically my idea was just to take it because it's all about a lat it's just a story entirely in Latin, a story about a family entirely in Latin. But um the idea was just to make it really messed up. <laughs> I think I think I think I think you know exactly what I'm talking about. Julius <laughs> Adai Miliam Hastam Yakit. 
<laughs> Julius Dikit Marco. No, Julius Dikit Marchi. Pulsa Julia Marche. <laughs> Marcus Pulsat Julia. Pulsa uh, Julia Plorat. Julius et Marcus Laetus. <laughs> It's mess. Let those who understand Latin know why it is mess. <laughs> oh dear. Is that the same mountain? I actually don't think it is. I don't think it's actually the same mountain as as um as where I am, where my place is. I'm actually gonna go there far out, cause it's big. It's really really big. Oh, tell me we've got a plains biome here. Logos, Domine Miserere Pauli. Miserere, Miserere. I'm trying to remember exactly how to... Logos, Alter Paulus equals Juan Los Paul, Pavlos. Um... Uh... Uh, mihi uh, melius uh, melius dicere uh, alius alius paulus non uh, non alter paulus paulus uh, quia in gra quia in graeque in graeco in graecu uh, quia uh, graeque alos 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 est uh, um, uh, hic, uh, unus digitus, alus, uh, uh alius digitus, uh, ides, uh, ides graeque, ides graeque, um, quid is verbad finger graeque, um, finger, other finger, et, uh, Et Greek uh, allos finger. Uh, on the other hand, uh, alter alter est in gra uh, est Greek uh, heteros heteros. Um, it is it is Anglicae different. Um, uh, qui est uh, qui est alius qui est alius est uh, Mm, est uh, idem, est uh, est uh, idem. Uh, heteros et alter non idem, non idem uh, said different. Uh, uh, Id est uh, in in oc uh, uh, in in uh, in oc re in oc uh, uh, Paulus apostolus. Uh, Unus Paulus et ego alius Paulus. Um, alter Paulus sic sic ego sum uh, sed uh, sed uh, melius melius mihi dicere uh, alius Paulus quid uh, quod ego sum alius Paulus. <laughs> Did I just hear digitus? You heard digitus. You heard digitus. Digitus finger. Digitus. That was the that was the longest I ever spent trying to s explain something in Latin. And of course, my vocab is very very limited at the moment, so I could only say so much. But hey, I'm I'm happy. I'm happy with what I was made. I I uh, um I hope uh, I hope you understood that logos.
uh, alters, uh, uh, logo said, alter est uh, secundus ex duobus. Sick, 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 sick. Um, sick, 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 sick. Yes, yeah, sick, sick. Hey, uh, 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 well, you know Latin better than me, so hey. <laughs> this is nice. Actually, which way is that? That is east. Okay, so I was going to remember to head east to head home. Doki Doki, that is sick indeed. <laughs> Rest Killer says, have you ever played Terraria? Oh, yes, I have. I do still play it every now and then. And I very much love it. And I despise baby zombies. I despise them with a passion. But yes, I've played Terraria. I really enjoy it. I currently have an expert mode world. Um, I got absolutely... Thwarted by Skeletron in expert mode. I severely underestimated his power. Oh man, but yeah. Benne nihil es grave. Um, nihil es grave. Uh, in, uh, well, in, 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 uh, in, uh, Minecraft, uh, id est, quid est Minecraft, quid est Minecraft, letime, uh, effodere facire, <laughs> effodere facire, uh, hic, hic est Minecraft letine dicitur, uh, effodere facire, <laughs> anyway, anyway, um, in Minecraft, ecce, uh, por, porto, porto omnes, porto omnes, uh, sed, sed, uh, nul, uh, sed, uh, nullus, nullus, uh, grave, nullus grave. Lo, logo says, ars is craft. So I'm using the, um, I'm using the, well, I'm using a verb. And uh, I, I assume there's probably a verb form of ars, but I'm using a verb for... Um, oh, that was sugar cane right here. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I was using a verb form because I believe Minecraft, with the, with the way it's intended, is meant to be the verbs, as, as far as I'm aware. So I just use verbs, but there's probably a better verb for ars. That makes more sense. Yes, we've got sugarcane. It's only a small amount, but honestly, that's more than enough for me. Yes, now to head home. Mission complete. I should really get some music happening because there is royalty free music I can play. Like some really good stuff. There's artists called Home, I believe. And some of his songs like Dusk and We're Finally Landing, they're just mm, the best lo-fi stuff to relax to. Ooh, got a message. Maybe you guys know what I'm talking about. They're the best songs. That's nice. Although I don't, I don't really like exploring water caves. I hope at some point they add, I don't know, like a snorkel or like a, what, what should I call it? Like an air thing, a, 
<laughs> what do you what do you call them? I don't know, some kind of snorkel or whatever in Minecraft where you're able to hold a ton more air while going underwater. You know? That would be awesome if they added that. Make underwater explanation uh, exploration actually more feasible. Although, well, they do have the potion of water breathing, although it's not exactly easy to make. I just need to go now. Thanks to the stream. God bless. Hey, God bless uh, Jeremiah. Thank you for coming, bruh. Hope to see you next time. And uh, keep on the lookout for more content. And uh, in particular, the thing I'm going to announce at the very end of the stream. Maybe maybe come back to the end of the stream whenever you can because the announcement is going to be pretty, pretty awesome uh, for those who, who so desire. Anyway, catch you, mate. Have a good one. <clears throat> But, uh, yeah, so he's, my man says, Voluntas tua loquendi publices mirablis, Paole. Mirablis. So many words I don't know, man. Come on. <laughs> oh, man. Voluntas tua loquendi publices mirablis. Ah, no, no, I get you. I get you. Just purely by association with English words. No, I get you. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, man. Thank you very much. I'm, 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 I'm glad with that. I mean, like, personally, I just don't have any, any, any qualms, no embarrassment with just trying and often failing to speak another language in, in, in public. I'm just trying. I don't, I don't really care. I don't really care. But, uh, but um, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you, I'm glad you enjoy it. I'm glad you find it, uh, mirablis. Uh, Andrew says, home is great. Come back down is another great track by them. I don't think I've heard that one. I'll, I'll have to look it up. Because anything by home is just incredible. Hey, Dave, I've got one more thing to say. It's important. Do you want to check my thing? Oh, oh, no. Oh, that's not good. Oh, that is not good. Hang on. That was a close call. That was close. <laughs> oh dear. So I've got to remember. So this is powdered snow. You fall through it and you slowly freeze to death. It is... It has a very slight texture difference. You can actually... Perfect. You can see it right here. So this is normal packs. This is normal snow right here. That's powdered snow. You can see there's a difference. But as you can tell, it's a very, very subtle difference. And uh, as you're moving, uh, you just might not be able to pick it up. So I'm going to be very, very careful here with where I step. Still going east, yep, cool. Oh, a nether portal, hello. Should be good. I should get some good stuff from it. Ooh, okay. Obsidian, obsidian. Fire charge, fire charge. Glycerine melon, nice. Flint, flint and steel, and a sharpness five golden axe. Far out. Okay, okay. We got some stuff. We got some stuff. Gold blocks as well. Don't mind if I do. Oh, oh, guys, do you? Oh, far. Oh no, no, we have no, we have enough. Oh dear, ladies and gentlemen, do you know what this means? Do you know what this means? And I don't have a. Of course, I don't have a pickaxe on me. <laughs> This means, ladies and gentlemen, that next time, next stream, we are going to the nether. Oh yeah, we are going to the depths of the nether itself. We are going to breach the gates of the nether itself. We're going to take the fight back to the enemy. Oh yeah, this is great. I'm going to remember this spot. 
So I think that's north, that's east. So if I remember correctly, okay, my place should be just down here. Keyword should be. And if and if it is, I'll be able to oh oh wow, my game is lagging. So my get my place should be down here, and if it is, then I'll remember this spot perfectly. And it's not. Um Hmm. Okay. I may or may not be lost. <laughs> um, I might just have to do an absolutely fat backtrack to the river. I'm going to sleep first. Because, uh, yeah, it's not the best position to be in, not going to lie. <laughs> Still a very beautiful, very beautiful place. I'm trying to remember now what my... Pl I'm trying to remember what the land around my place looked like, around the village. I'm trying to remember what it looks like. It looks... Hmm. Hmm. So I'm going to try to remember this. Um... You know, I'm going to write these coordinates down. Got a piece of paper. Okay. Still the old fashioned way. I, for one, want to try and get off relying on digital note taking all the time. So, well, let's go with it. X two one seven nine Y one three four. Yep, cool. Uh. All right, cool. <clears throat> Got those cords down, so I can freely explore, or rather, try to find my way home. This is actually the true Spider-Man Far From Home, or No Way Home. Yes, No Way Home. Although, I guess I'll have to deny the... Oh, for God's sake, this again. Oh, crap. I hate powdered snow. Look at that, look like you just fall like a mm, that's annoying. That's all powdered snow. <sighs> okay. Ah, uh, you know what? That might be it. Now that makes sense. There's the forest there. There's another regular forest there. This actually might be my home mountain. So let's head there. In which case, it's actually not, not the worst trip. Um, it shouldn't be that difficult. Fifteen minutes. Alright, cool. So the plan, as usual, um, is that my streams usually go for around two, around, around two hours. Um, not too long, not too short. I reckon that's a good sweet spot. Um, but just before I end this one, I'm going to show off uh, the big thing. Yeah. All right. And that's a lot of powdered snow. I'm not going to fall for that again. And this is regular snow. Ah, oh, man. So, that's where I came from. This is where I'm going.
Doki Doki says, "How is your journey to reform theology?" Um, and interesting. It was it was an it was an interesting one. Quite quite smooth, in my opinion. Because I well, more more or less. Oh, great! This actually might not be it. Oh, that is another village, and I've got stuck in here again. Oh man! How am I? Hello. Thank you. Far out. Anyway, I found another village to convert, and arguably it's a better positioned one. Um, but they'll they'll have to wait. I'm still working on this first village. But uh, yeah, my journey through all forms of theology quite pretty straightforward, honestly. It was just I saw these scriptures. Um, I know I know I didn't really think of a whole ton about them a lot. Although I was concerned with Calvinism, for example, and I didn't think, oh, I think it's wrong and all that stuff. Although I wasn't exactly, I wasn't, I don't think I was one of those screechers who was just like, oh, the Calvinist God, man, evil, blah, blah, blah. My mindset has always been, look, whatever God's, however God's chosen to reveal himself, however he's chosen to govern his world, um, we're obligated to, to accept it. So um, I've studied scriptures, in particular looking at, um, in particular, basically the, pretty simple exegesis of like well James like figures like James White for example right really kind of kind of knocked it home for me um yeah just to say look it's these scriptures are quite darn obvious in my opinion toward a reformed understanding um yeah or in particular for monogism in that so yeah that's base that's basically me um fine this is a beautiful spot it is really picturesque but that is not my village but I am going to go there I'm going to loot it of its goods and then I'm going to continue the journey home. <laughs> but yeah, that was basically my journey, so to, so to speak. I wouldn't really call it a journey. It was actually quite seamless um, and very quick. Hmm. I wish I found this village first. It's in a much better spot. <laughs> but whatever. We've already committed. We're going to stick with this uh, first one we found until... Well, until we're done with it. Alright. Let's find all the good stuff they got. Ooh, yes, sued. Give me that. I'll dump that. Dump that. Dump that. Oh, hello. Yeah, I'll just leave it for now. Because I do actually need to find my way back and I genuinely have no idea where I am. But I am going to presume by heading... Hmm. This is tricky, not going to lie. Worst case scenario, I can head back to the portal because I do have a rough idea of how I got to that portal and then I can just backtrack to the river and call it a day. <clears throat> but yes, for those who are still watching, if you haven't subscribed already, do subscribe and turn on the notifications so you can see my stuff as soon as it comes up. This series is weekly. This uh, Upon this block is a... Weekly chill stream series. Oh, blue ice. This is the best stuff. Oh, this is beautiful. And another nether portal. Hello. Sweet. I'll, I'll get your coordinate down, I guess. Wow, this is, oh, wow, the latest update is just so beautiful. I just have the Skyrim soundtrack playing in my head just because of how nice these places are. Ooh, nine nuggets. Yeah, more obsidian. Far out, that's awesome. Um, what can I dump in here? I'll dump that, dump that. Don't really need that. Da, da, da. Perfect. Uh, Doki says, going to a Presbyterian church at the moment and I have a lot of researching ahead of me. Hey, good on you, man. Good on you. 
Yeah, you just got to make the commitment. You know, you got to well, you got to know where you're going. It's it's good to do that. Go on, doing your research first before you make a commitment. Make sure you're convinced. Make sure you know. Okay, this is what I'm doing. Go on ahead with it. That's good. That's very good to hear. Oh come on! Where's the? I want to. I don't want to end the stream lost. Although I guess I guess maybe maybe if I don't find my way home by the end of this, um, maybe I can make it as a cliffhanger. Will. Will, will the other pool find his way back to the village and be able to save their souls or will they be lost for eternity because he couldn't get home with the sugar cane to make their Bibles? <laughs> Tune in next time <laughs> to find out. Oh, oh, Emerald. Oh, stop it. Hell, heck yeah. Heck yeah. Ooh, got a fairly nice cave here too. Bunch of iron, coal. You know, I'm gonna spend a sec. I th I think this might be the way. I think this might be the way. And I don't have a pickaxe. Of course I don't. Of course I don't. Actually, hang on. How far back was that? Oh, why didn't I record the what Z coordinate? No, it's not the Y. The Y coordinate's vertical. Oh, so I lost that first portal. Oh, that sucks. Oh, that really sucks. But I think I could probably find it manually. In ah! Oh, well. Let's, let's write this coordinate down, I guess. Let's, let's far out. Nether 2. X. Two six seven zero Z I'll be away from keyboard for a bit. All good, Logos, all good. Uh, I'm just I'm just quite annoyed now. I am genuinely quite annoyed. Oh man. Oh well. Can I make another pickaxe? Actually, no, I can't make another pickaxe here. Sweet. Cool. Sweet. All right, let's get some stuff. What to throw away? What to throw away now? Yeah, good enough. I'll just get other resources later. I just need to get home. That's all that matters. Which way, this way is south. Logos says, I'm back. Hello. Welcome back, my man. Welcome back. Hmm. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm going to go for a little bit more, but it looks like I might have to finish this one on a cliffhanger. Um, because I can't find the way home just yet. <laughs> oh dear. This is going to be great. All just to get some sugar cane. Far out. A man going out to get some paper for his Bibles. And he gets lost. All because I went to another mountain that I suspected might have been the mountain near my home, but it actually wasn't. Oh well. What can you do? Actually, for one, you can just not get lost. You can keep track of yourself and go back the way you came, rather than speculating and taking unnecessary risks. That is the moral of today's story, friends. Do not take unnecessary risks. If you know that there is even a small risk of something going wrong, but you have a surefire safety mechanism to prevent it, 
don't take the risk. You don't have to. And there's a jungle there, so I am verifiably lost. Unless that river could be the one I connected to. It could be it. I, I do not... Okay, that is probably not it because I do not remember these jungles here. Unless it's further upstream, buddy. No. Oh, dear. You shouldn't take full damage when you land on leaves. That makes no sense. What do you think about it? to look over this I might have to re-watch this stream and maybe pass ones in case I hit the F3 buttons then because when you hit F3 of course it shows you coordinates that's what I was using um yeah so I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to do that <laughs> oh man oh well ah oh. This, this sad Minecraft music queuing in just in time as the existential dread seeps in. I might get to a nice vantage point and then uh, and then call it there. But uh, but then of course use the stream to announce the and there's another Nether portal. But I do not care, frankly. I just want to get home. Oh, hello, ladies and gentlemen, we are home. We have found our way home. And you know what? Sure enough, because I am that good with my, with retaining my sense of direction, we came from that way. Quite far that way. So, accidental screenshot. So, perfect. We don't need to fret anymore. In fact, you know what? I can set up the sugarcane farm right now before we call it a stream. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. We are home. Can I get a hallelujah in the chat? This calls for a hallelujah. Where to plant this sugarcane farm? Oh, I thought I was a creeper for a second. I might just dump it right here. Yeah, seems easy enough. Andrew says hallelujah. Doki says hallelujah. Hallelujah, brothers. Hallelujah. All right, let's get to it. Actually, no, I need. Get water first. Oh, I have to make an infinite water for source first, but that's going to take ages. Nah, don't worry. We can do it. We can do it. Okay, cool. So we've got these farms here. I can just take water from here. That's a closer one there. Cool. Pro tip, infinite water sources only require two buckets of water. Observe, my friends. Ta-da. 
Look at that. And now just endless replication. Oops. And there we go. Now let's do this. All right. Perfect. That's all set up. You know what? Let's do some last minute dumping into the chest. Oh, yes, another emerald. Bone meal. This, 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 this. This, 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 this. Actually, no, I'll use you to make a bow. Um, food is always good. Always need that. Put away these glistering melon slices for a rainy day. Dump that, dump that, action. Dump that. Dump that. And, uh, I think we are good. Ladies and gentlemen. Upon this block, episode three. Oh, man, I need a stretch. Man. Oh, man, this is a good episode. We got some stuff done. Hey, we, we really did. We got stuff done. We got the... The church, we got the frame of the church done as I as I intended. We got the roof done. We even got some stained glass. Finally got sugar cane, so production of Bibles can, can begin very soon. Although, probably will need a cow farm as well, just because they require leather. But uh, we got those things done. Um, and yeah, we made some good progress. Had some great chat as well about content, about theology, as is as has always been the intention for this thing. It's been awesome. It's been great. It's been. Uh, fulfilling a niche that I have not found exploited elsewhere. Some good Minecraft gaming, down-to-earth meme talk, and also in-depth theology. You can't get this anywhere else, guys. This is truly unique. Um, if you haven't, So if you haven't subbed yet already, please do now. And do send me. Send my content and tell, your, tell other people around you who really do want this stuff. People who can talk theology, the depths of theology, and yet they still remain down-to-earth and not in some academic ivory tower. Send... Suggest me, suggest my content to your to any of the other friends who really do want that stuff. And uh, in light of that, I am going to try to switch screens uh, in order to show something. Let me just pull it up. Hang on, how can I? Am I able to freeze the thing I am on? I don't think I can. Okay, you know, one second. So changing to window capture. Um, da, 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 da. Here we go. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is exactly what it looks like. It is not launched yet, but uh, so it's currently in beta. So I'm currently trying to switch it up. But uh, yes, this is indeed. A Patreon. I am intending to launch this within the next... I'm trying to put in the ballpark maybe the next two or three days. Because I've still got a few things to sort up with the uh, with the Discord for patrons and the Minecraft server itself. Yes, a dedicated Minecraft server. Um, if, you, if you are going to contribute 25... These are Australian dollars, by the way. 25 Australian dollars. So it automatically converts. If you're in the United States, for example... Um, it is even less than this in uh, USD. I think I did the conversion and $25 is around $18 USD. So that's pretty, pretty darn good bargain if I must say so myself. Um, the Australian dollar is kind of messed up. So uh, it's good for you guys at least. It's good for you guys and I'm happy with that. So I am launching a Patreon very soon and I've wanted to for a long time because, um, well, for, well, before, before this even happened. So right now in my state, there is a mandate that if teachers want to head back to teaching in physical schools, they have to get the needle. And uh, I, of course, on a matter of principle, uh, not because I, I believe that they're going to give me 5G or a third arm or anything, but because on a matter of principle, um, the state doesn't have the right to do that. So on a matter of principle, I'm not going to get a needle. And uh, because of that, I haven't had teaching work before, but I am going to be precluded from any teaching work in the near future. Um, and I was intending at this very point in time to have some kind of teaching work. So... Whatever, but even even before that, I was intending to have a Patreon, a Patreon, in order to make a make a nice income off uh, what I do and be able to dedicate more time and more resources to it. So, um, the the mandate really has accelerated my process for launching a Patreon, and uh, yeah, this is gonna be this is gonna be it right here. Um, I am gonna be uh, yeah, it's well, I'm gonna be launching it very soon. 
Um, and God willing, if uh, any of you out there really do enjoy my content and really want to contribute to my mission, um, you're going to have the opportunity to do that soon. And uh, of course, you've got to you've got to keep in mind the the key thing is not really the rewards themselves because I know there's other creators who probably give way more in terms of rewards for for bucks. Um, but the whole point of donation, these are ultimately donations. So that's if you if you are considering contributing. Just know that you are doing it first and foremost because you want to contribute to donate. Um, and these little rewards here, these modest rewards, in my opinion, are just my way of saying thanks. So you have your piss tossed here, you're faithful. Um, you will be, your name will be featured at the end of the video, simple as that. And you will, of course, have my eternal gratitude. Uh, the diakonos or the deacon um, tier, $10 a month, you'll get that in the piss toss plus an invite to the Discord server, which is going to be a very, very, very cool Discord server. And uh, my buddy, my buddy Logos here in the chat, he is actually, you can see here, dedicated Latin instructor who can coach in the language. That is actually our man Logos right here in this chat. He is going to be helping, he is going to be leading rather. The uh, Latin Latin instruction in the chat is going to be awesome. It's going to be fantastic. So his services will be available there. Um, and I, have, I of course, at some point intend to give like proper, like, classes so to speak in the uh in the chat on topics that i am learned in so that's that's not gonna be happening straight away uh, but it will be in the future when i get stuff organized so yeah that's gonna be the primary reward for the diakonos tier uh ten dollars ten australian dollars a month and at twenty five dollars twenty five australian dollars a month you'll be the episcopos or uh, uh, episcopos tier rather a bishop um you will gain access to the private minecraft server that i mentioned just now just earlier um, yeah, so private Minecraft server, play along with me and other people, um, uh, like Logos, for example, other people who will otherwise render their services to the Discord. Um, have a good time, have a fun time, it'll be great. And you'll gain access to the Ecclesia uh, channel on the Discord, which is important because that's where I'll be posting things like drafts and updates uh, on my content and where you can even give feedback and uh, hope and potentially influence the end result. So that's going to be that's going to be great. And then you've got the Patriarches tier or the Patriarch tier. Uh, as you can see, a nice, nice patriarch Chad here. The author bros probably know the visual inspiration for the patriarch here. Um, all prior rewards plus a pro plus monthly private video calls with myself and other people who render their service to the, to the Discord if, if they're available, of course. But primarily private video calls with myself every month. So those are going to be the reward tiers once this thing has launched. And I really hope... Well, actually, first of all, before all that, and I have these disclaimers in the Patreon uh, once it launches. If you are considering contributing, first consider, well, for one, these are primarily donations, so you've got to remember that. Second, that you are you are keeping up with all of your financial responsibilities, first and foremost. Those are your number one priority, including tithing to your church. I, With, with respect, if you are not tithing to your church, um, if you're not tithing to your church, whether you're not able or if you're willingly not tithing to your church, then please do not please do not donate to me because otherwise I, I, I genuinely believe I'm taken away from your local church. So make sure if you're considering donating that you are first and foremost tithing. Um, and yeah, and then probably third, also very important, know my convictions, all right? I am Protestant. I am also uh, charismatic. Not that I believe that rolling on the floor laughing is a manifestation of the Holy Spirit. I genuinely question that. Um, but otherwise, I believe in things like like modern day prophecy, like uh, uh, like miraculous healing and gifts and things like that. And I'm Protestant, so you know, sola scriptura, sola fide, things like that. But I also have a great appreciation for the theology and the aesthetics of our otherwise more. I say as a nomenclature, I don't. Uh, apostolic um, <laughs> friends like the Orthodox and all, especially the Eastern Orthodox. The uh, aesthetics and the categories they use, I think are very helpful. And in my opinion, can actually help strengthen um, the uh, uh, Protestant believers like myself. So I think uh, I think Logos and other author bros in the chat may, uh, may, uh, may appreciate that. So anyway, this will be launching very, very soon and I'll make posts once it's up and uh, once you want to take a look at it. And uh, yeah, that's, um, that is... Number three on Jack Ray says, I do like the air quotes on that, on uh, Apostolic. <laughs> prot gang, prot gang right here. But uh, yeah, I do hope, um, assuming all those questions that I've mentioned, that those things that you consider before you donate, assuming that you're good with all of them, 
um, I really do hope that you uh, that you choose to donate um, because it'll, it'll mean a lot to me. It'll mean I'll be able to dedicate much more time and effort to my channel, um, and I'll have I'll be able to have a stable uh, potentially at some point with enough donators have a have a stable income so that I can keep doing this and basically become cancel proof, God willing, because that's that's the problem that many Christians, Christian content creators among and other people are facing today, being cancelled, losing their livelihood because of their faith. So, um, and I, I know Patreon isn't the best of this, but I do know very based, very, very based Christian content creators who nonetheless still use Patreon and they're arguably even more explicit than me um, with their claims. So it, it still works for now. So as long as I don't become a mega celebrity with like the attention of the mainstream media, I think I'll be fine. Um, but hey, maybe one day if they if like, for example, if the guys at Gab, uh, decide to launch a Patreon alternative, I'll probably move over to there. But, um, yeah, anyway, that is all. Thank you all for watching this episode of Upon This Block. I am really glad, uh, yeah, I'm really glad that you came along and, uh, yeah, it's been great. I uh, hope you really enjoyed this episode and I really do hope that you consider, um, that you consider becoming a patron at some point. Um, primarily because you're into, you believe in my mission and my content, but also because I have some, uh, there's some good stuff in it for you as well. Um, I do intend to make my discord almost an online school really, um, for patrons. And, uh, I think we'll be able to do great as if you read the descriptions, um, of the, in the Diakonos tier, it actually mentioned, I do intend to get other instructors. Actually, does it, does it say that he, okay, no, I didn't mention it, but I do intend to get other people who will voluntarily render their services for instructing on other topics too. So in effect, my Discord may become like a patron school. Um, yeah, I hope you make it like that one day. I really hope you consider donating. And uh, thank you all for watching. This has been The Other Paul. And I will see you all in the next stream. Goodbye. God bless. Um, and do keep on the lookout for more content that will be coming very soon. Um, goodbye, brothers. You have a good day. Have a good evening. Uh, may the Lord be with you. Oh, wrong one. Hang on. Do I have a proper? <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't even have a. I don't even have a proper goodbye screen. Um. Yeah. Waiting screen. I'll just put this on here. I'm. I'm gonna. I'll make another screen for goodbye. So anyway, goodbye, friends. <laughs>